In today's video, we're talking about the most common ways that we see people charged with prostitution in Arizona. So some people might think that this is not a common thing. In reality, it is. We see it charged quite frequently all throughout the state, and there are a number of different ways that the police investigate prostitution offenses, and they charge them based upon certain activity. They also will identify certain sources where they believe prostitution to be most prevalent. We're gonna identify those today and how some of them work. So a couple quick things. Where do we see it, or where did we see it most frequently? The number one purveyor back a couple years ago was a website called Backpage.com. If you don't have any familiarity with that, it's probably a good thing. But a lot of kind of uh, under the radar type of stuff happened on Backpage.com. It was seized by the U.S. government, by the FBI. So Backpage.com, although it used to be a very common place for the police to set up sting operations and to put ads for uh, company, that website is no longer around anymore. So it's not common anymore. So Backpage.com, we're going to put a big no here because we don't see any new cases from Backpage. We also don't see anything from Craigslist.com. This also used to be a big area where a lot of people would go onto Craigslist.com and then they would go onto the personals section. They would look for men looking for females or females looking for men or men looking for men or women looking for women or all sorts of different permutations of what people are looking for. But Craigslist took down their personal sections. So we don't see those anymore either. People are not posting ads for company. And so Craigslist.com used to be a big one, but it's not anymore. So we don't see any prostitution cases originating from either of those two sites. Cross both those off the list. Now that doesn't mean that people still are not finding other websites and other sources online. We do see a lot from other escort sites. So there are literally escort sites where you can go on review a certain category of individuals that you want to spend time with and then set up through the website or through them personally to have contact with them, to have a night out, to go to dinner together, or whatever it is that you decide to do. Online escort services are still very much prevalent. Uh, some of them are a little bit more reputable than others. I haven't used any of them personally, but some of them appear to be more established sites. Others of them are sort of fly-by-night. They'd probably be up be in business for a certain amount of time, be shut down, move on to the next one. But that is where we see those things. The police know about them as well. So you have to be cautious. If anything that's going on these escort sites is going to probably be monitored by law enforcement. So you want to be very cautious if you're going to be on those sites. The other thing that we see very frequently and probably is one of the most common are massage parlors. So there are massage parlors that are all throughout Arizona and oftentimes what will happen will be a relationship will develop and people who go and get massages frequently will go into an arrangement where they will get additional services for an additional fee. That would fit the definition of prostitution under Arizona law. And the police will catch wind of this. They will be become aware that this stuff is happening at certain establishments. They will send in an undercover uh, officer to that massage parlor when the proposition is made, they will conduct an arrest. It's kind of like a sting operation. It's, it nets generally less people because it's only a few people who are operating the, uh, the establishment who are actually caught up in the, in the prostitution type of a sting, but it still is fairly common. There are a lot of different massage parlors throughout Arizona that do offer these types of services and they get caught when the police catch wind of it and then do an investigation. We also see some of this stuff happen at strip clubs. So other times people are charged with prostitution is when people who are working at strip clubs or people who are uh, attending strip clubs, uh, being pat patrons there, will go in, they will get a lap dance or they will engage in some sort of activities and they will make a proposal that things go one step further, further than is ordinarily allowed at these places when that happens, oftentimes the police will catch wind of it. They will send in other cover officers, undercover dancers. They will make propositions when th that offer is accepted or when they are the recipient of a proposition, boom, that person will be arrested for prostitution or other things like touching, uh, sexual contact, sexual conduct. Those types of offenses are hap happening generally where there are sexual types of encounters at strip clubs in those types of areas. Long running joke in Arizona has been you can also find prostitutes or a higher level of prostitution 
on Van Buren. Van Buren's a street in Arizona. It's downtown. It runs uh, across the Phoenix. And it still is, believe it or not, a place where there is this a higher level of this activity. So people will still joke about it. You go down to Van Buren, if you're looking for a good time, or there's many, many jokes, we'll save those for another video. But you can go down to Van Buren, the police are well aware of it. They will routinely monitor that area for this type of activity. So the thought of just going down and uh, finding somebody on the side of the road is probably not a good decision because the police will typically be monitoring that and oftentimes doing stings where they will have undercover officers there as well who are being the recipient of that proposition. As soon as that proposition is made, they will conduct an arrest. So Van Buren Street, very much still alive and well in the uh, city of Phoenix and in Arizona. There are other hotspots as well, but Van Buren is by far the most popular, the most well-known. The other thing, similar to the online escort services, are models for hire. So there are different websites and different companies that will have models for hire who you hire to be literally models, nice looking people who will come and spend time with you or you'll hire them for a particular purpose, but really it's kind of code for other things. So they will come and they'll do their modeling, but it will also be something that they're expected to do a little bit more and, and perform other activities. Police, uh, again, are aware of all of these things, so they may be involved in that pipeline. They may be monitoring these types of things and then interfering with them, placing undercover assets, doing a high level patrol there so that they can uh, intercept this type of conduct. So these are really the seven main ways that we see prostitution. These are no longer around anymore, but there are other sites that are very, very similar to those, but it's the same type of concept. People are looking for connections and they make connections in one of these ways. Now the police are monitoring these things. These are some of their tactics. They will post fake ads really on any one of these things. So if you see an advertisement, chances that it's legitimate or a cop are probably about 50-50. It depends on, uh, that's not legal advice, don't take my word on that. But there are a lot of advertisements that are placed by the police officers. They are looking for people, they're basically baiting them into responding, setting up a meet, and then making an arrest. Similarly, sting operations, as I kind of mentioned with the strip clubs and with the massage parlors, there are police agencies who will do some investigation. They will set up a sting, meaning they will have multiple officers. They will build up a case, do some investigation, and then make a number of arrests at the same time. We also have undercover officers who are appearing at, at any of these establishments or responding to the fake advertisements. They are acting as the prostitutes. They are going to be inducing people to engage in services for money and then make the arrest or call in other officers who will make the arrest as part of a sting. We've seen situations where they've set up 50 different uh, individuals over the course of a long period of time, all for the same time, and they'll just run them through and make a number of arrests. We've seen literally courtrooms full of people as a result of a sting operation and prostitution charges. And finally, one of the most egregious things that we have seen, we actually won a trial on this, is when the police will do a bait and switch. So they will have an individual who is going through, who, who is looking to engage with a prostitute. They will contact that prostitute, they will set up a, a, a meet, not knowing that that individual is an undercover officer. When they are en route to the meet, when they are going to meet that individual, the police will say something like, well, I hope it doesn't scare you or freak you out, but I'm actually 16, I'm actually 14. And they'll change the game when the person's already en route at, to a hotel room or something like that. And so a lot of the times the individuals who are going for that meet certainly would never have consented to that if they had known that but they are kind of duped, they're baited into going into, in over there, and those are much, much more serious charges. So this is how we see prostitution most commonly charged. If you or somebody you know, somebody you love has been charged with prostitution or has been involved in a situation like this, give us a call. We offer free case evaluations. We'll help them through the case, make sure that they are not going to jail, going to prison. Give us a call. We look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks for watching.